Randall with uh, Port Media Open Studios, and I have Wes with me today to discuss the Cruise in the 50s car show. Um, very excited to have you here today in the studio, Wes. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a big show coming up. Yeah. So the show is August 11th from 5 to 8 in downtown Newburyport. Yeah, we take up State Street, Pleasant Street, Inn Street. Uh, it's the 10th annual. We're doing some special things just for the 10th annual, so we're very excited about it. Awesome. That's wonderful. 10 years. So how, how has the progression through the last 10 years been with people coming on out to see the show? Well, it's interesting. The very first year, um, we actually had regular traffic on State Street with oh, wow. spectators, and the chief of police saw that. We only had 90 cars the first year. State, the uh, chief of police saw that and decided the next year we need to close the streets down because it was dangerous that we had spectators were out in the street and the flow of traffic was in the street. But uh, we've come a long way since then. We're presently up to about 250 to 275 show cars. Wow, from 90 to that much. Wow. Um, how has been like the progression of seeking out cars um, within the past 10 years? Well, we try to um, seek out really quality cars that are not common at car shows. I may go to a car show with 300 cars and pick out three cars. We, we don't want the common things that show up at everyday car shows. So some have called me a curator i don't think that's appropriate but that's what some have uh, mentioned what are the top three bullet point things that you look for when seeking out a car for the show well the quality of restoration most cars today are restored uh, as opposed to original um, the rarity of the car uh, and the condition Awesome. I was uh, very interested to hear um, that you had um, the DeLorean from Back to the Future and the Batmobile. Um, how, how does it go about getting cars like that to be well, involved I in did, the show? I didn't get the uh, Batmobile, but going back to the first show, this was started by WNBP Radio, which is sold out now to Bloomberg. WNBP was 14.50 a.m. And the owners of the show... Uh, found the Batmobile. This is the Batmobile that sold at auction for $4.1 million. This is the real deal that came from the TV show. And um, it ended up in Southboro. They wanted to do some charity work, so we worked with the Boys and Girls Club and brought the car to town. And it was an unbelievable event for the public. It was just thousands upon thousands. That's the year that the police told us we had 12 to 16,000 people on the street. And I think a lot of it was the Batmobile. Wow. Um, when seeing cars like that um, and having so many spectators show up, are there any do's and don'ts on how to, um, you know, unlook these beautiful cars and uh, make sure that you're, you know, uh, interested, but, you know, acting appropriately? Well, in the case of the Batmobile, we had stanchions and roping around it. And if you wanted to sit in the car and have your photo taken, it was a $100 donation to the Boys and Girls Club. So that's how we raised money. Uh, the owners wanted a minimum of $1,500 to the local and Boys and Girls Club, and we far exceeded that. Uh, you mentioned the DeLorean. That was not in the actual movie, but it was a recreation. And what we did with Institution for Savings, if you know the clock tower that's out in the parking lot, mm -hmm. we actually hooked up a cable, which was one of the scenes in the movie, was the cable that ran up to the clock tower. So we were able to cre recreate that with the help of the Institution for Savings, and it was really very cool. Oh, that's a fan favorite for fans, um, that movie for sure. Um, which is the furthest um, that a car has had to travel to the show out here in Newburyport? I'm sorry, the distance? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there have been um, years, and I think this will be, that we get at least every state in, in New England. And we have drawn New York and Pennsylvania and New Jersey in the past. Um, but a minimum, we will have every state in, in uh, New England represented, at least one. Wow, that's very impressive. Um, and um, what's the difference between, like, 
you know, um, typical spectators um, like myself who might not have a knowledge, you know, that deeply about cars versus um, those who um, are psyched to see classics that, you know, uh, they know about and have a um, hobby and an interest in cars. Well, it's interesting you should bring that up because we're very proud of the crowd, not just the numbers, but there are people in town, this is entertainment, they come out with their kids or their grandkids and um, they might point out a car that their mother or father had or grandfather. And, um, you know, that's an entertainment factor. But we also are very proud we have a lot of people that come that know what they're looking at. And we have a lot of different cars in great condition, and that's part of the draw. And I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they own the show at this point. They're the people that get the crowd. I may have something to do with getting the cars there, but the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Aaron Duggan especially, has worked hard to get the crowd here this year. Is there a specific um, car that might be very distinctive to um, those who have a hobby and an interest in cars and do research on that? Well, each year we try to get a special car in front of Bonatti Jewelers. Um, they have promised a sponsorship this year and we're looking hard and far for a really cool car. And we have a couple in mind. Um, we haven't had in the past uh, 34 Packard um, Dietrich sedan. It's a convertible sedan. Um, they were very rare in the 30s and rarer today. Um, to give you an idea, Henry Ford was selling cars in the 30s for $500. This was five to $7,000 in the 30s. I don't know. I haven't done the math what that equates to today, mm -hmm. but it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's outstanding. Um, and then um, what um, are some types of cars can, um, you know, people expect? Like what uh, range through the decades? Well, uh, we do have a very few, let's say, pre 1930s cars. The, the most, the majority of the cars will be 50s and 60s. And um, like I said, I enjoy the classics from the 30s. To me, we don't have enough of them. And a new addition this year, um, both the Batmobile and the Back to the Future DeLorean were at the Institution for Savings. Um, they have sponsored in part for the show this year, so we're bringing modern classics. And modern classics, uh, at least in this description, are going to be exotic supercars, as in Lamborghini, Maserati, McLaren, so forth, high-end Mercedes, Porsche, like that. Um, there's only room for a dozen cars, but I really think the younger generation is going to be relate, be able to relate to this. They really can't relate to the 50s. I mean, maybe their parents weren't born in the 50s. So I think these high-end cars, um, most of them selling today for over $200,000, are going to be at the Institution for Savings. So we're, we're pleased with that roundup of cars. Awesome. And then um, will there be judges for the show? Um... This is not a judge show. Um, I am involved with a few cars, few shows that are judged. Uh, this is this will not be judged. This is I won't call it difficult, but it's a tricky show to manage. We're on at least three different streets. We have 15 volunteer parkers, and I'd like to think we're very coordinated. Um, it's a tricky one to run, and to add an additional factor of judging might be too much, you know. We already have uh, difficulty finding enough volunteers, but um, we do appreciate those that are with us. Yeah, you mentioned volunteers. Um, what if someone's just hearing about the show now? Are you accepting more volunteers? To We're help looking out for Parkers. Um, I can give you my phone number, and I'll give it at the end of the show also. But And we'll also have room for more show cars. If you have a 1970s or earlier show car that you think is different in great condition, you can call Wes Pettengill at 978-465-3140. And also, if you'd like to volunteer as a parker, we certainly could use some help. Call the same number, 978-465-3140. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and then um, I was curious, what are the... Uh, the kind of uh, differences uh, that you've seen mainly 
from a car that was made in the 1930s versus 50s versus 70s? What are those differences that kind of stick out? Well, one of the things that um, I'm always attracted to it was a very short window that these cars had fins. That's the tall wings in the back with the usually a vertical tail light. And that was such a short window considering how long cars have been made for about 120 years now. From 1955 to 1961 basically was the window for fin cars. And, and also, I think the spectators will pick up on it. Um, compared to today's cars, you're going to see some great colors. You're going to see salmons and pinks and turquoise and uh, loud muscle car colors. Um, plum crazy comes to mind, a hugger orange, so forth and so on. But um, that era from the 50s and 60s, we kind of put a handle on that as color chrome and fins. And um, that, that has gone away. Today, if you look in a parking lot, it's gray, white, and black. That's about it. So, so some side diversity out there. That's so exciting to see that throughout the cars. Um, and then if someone is looking for more information about the show and, you know, how to be involved and, um, you know, where to go on down, um, where, where is the best place to find that? NewburyportChamber.org. All the information is there. Um, once again, if you want to get a car in or you'd like to volunteer as a parker, my phone number is the best way. It's uh, West Pettengill at 978. 465-3140. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on down um, to um, Port Media Open Studio uh, for discussing um, Cruise in the 50s event with us. Um, we are going to be at the event on August 11th, um, and the time again is from 5 to 8? That's correct. And our rain date uh, is the following Thursday from 5 to 8, and uh, information once again is available at um, NewReportChamber.org. Awesome. And then if you're unable to attend the event, um, we are going to be filming it on NCM Hub on our community access station. It will be posted on our YouTube as well. Um, thank you again, Wes, for coming on in. Thank you. Thank you.